there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we've got another review for you. This time it's Override 2 Super Mech League which is out for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS, Nintendo Switch and PC. And the version we're looking at in this video is the PlayStation edition of the game across PS4 Pro and PS5 and a code was provided by the publisher. I really don't know where I stand with Override 2 Super Mech League, and even as I sat to write this review, I didn't know what I was doing. I like the game, I really do, but at the same time, I actually hate it, but I still like it. I think I want to love it, but I hate it. I'm conflicted, and now I finally understand what my parents feel when they look at me. Override 2 Super Mech League isn't a bad game by any stretch, but it's nowhere near being a great one. I'd like to settle on good, but I can't decide if that's overstating or underplaying it. It's got everything an immature man-child could want in a brawler. Giant robo-mechs smashing the shit out of each other in city-wide arenas. Yet, despite being larger than life with eye-choking beams of colour, it's missing something. And not just an online community to keep the game going. Override 2 is a follow-up to the original game which I never played, so I can't really make comparisons. All I can tell you is that my time with Override 2 was frustratingly short and underwhelming, even though I wanted to spend hours inside it. The game blends online and offline play seamlessly, meaning that if there aren't any online players, you'll be playing with bots. This is fine, but the fractured nature of the game with its various game modes means you'll most likely be playing with AI opponents for the majority of your matches. This results in sitting around waiting for games to populate before the game finally gives up and throws you in with computer-controlled enemies and or allies. I'd have preferred it if there was a clear divide between online and offline play. The game modes are numerous, which is a good thing, because variety is the spice of fighting games, but few of them stand out. The game's campaign mode, which is also online-offline, did nothing to pull me into the story of corporate sponsorships battling Mega Mechs, but it's as good a place as any to start, aside from the tutorials, though you don't really need them. Combat is simple and takes inspiration from Tekken, in that your attacks for each limb are mapped to a different button, and in this case, it's the triggers. Each mech also has an ultimate move that can be performed by pulling a couple of triggers at the same time. It's easy to get stuck into then, but there's a clear lack of flow to the combat. Stringing together combos isn't a thing in Override 2, though you can perform some small 3-4 hit combos, providing your opponent isn't paying much attention. But, as you're mostly playing against AI opponents who never sleep, eat or falter, you can forget about it. Ultimate moves are the big bad moves you can pull off to really put some dents into the enemy's armour. On each stage, golden circles will appear and you need to get inside these rings of light to charge up your ultimate move. I can see the idea behind it. Encourage fighters to get into close quarters and batter each other out of an arena within an arena. But on the other hand, I'd often miss them during the chaotic brawls as I got thrown around the destructible arenas. Maybe that's more a Chris problem than a problem with the game. The game modes boil down to either free-for-all brawls or team brawls. No matter which one I played, I could never really tell who was on my team and who was an enemy, so I'd spend my time mashing the attack buttons hoping for the best. It worked, because I won quite a lot, but I never really felt like I accomplished anything, but I was still drawn to the game. Not because the online play was great, and not because smashing the AI was particularly fun. I think it's just the general chaos that doesn't ask for too much thinking. You get in the game, you smash some buttons for a bit, maybe pick up an overpowered melee weapon and smash everything, and then you do it again. It's very simple, and it doesn't take much skill, unlike other fighting games like Tekken or Street Fighter. Complicated combos are thrown out in favour of smashing the buttons as fast as you can and then running away when things get too hairy. I'm a simple man and this is a simple game that complicates itself with too many game modes and too few actual players to share them with. Now, a little bit about how the game plays on PS4 and PS5. On PS5, it looks great and mostly runs really well, even when the screen is puking every colour imaginable. On PS4, things are not so great. The frame rate is poor and there's a constant blur that honestly made me feel a little bit sick when I was playing. PS5 is definitely the way to go and if you're on Xbox, I imagine it's also best on Series XS. There is fun here and I've had some of it. It's not a deep brawler and it's no replacement for your typical fighting games, but it has a charm about it. And I'll go back to what I said earlier. Giant robo-mechs smashing the shit out of each other in city-wide arenas. 
And that's the end of this review. If you enjoyed this video and want more, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, and don't forget the bell so you're notified whenever we've got new stuff for you to watch. I've been Chris, I like to drink tea, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye!